Hi guys. So we're uh, going to go ahead and start. This is the attacking JBoss talk. If you want the WebSphere talk, that's in a different room. Uh, so just first, uh, who am I? I work at a software security, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, software as a service company as a uh, security engineer. So hence my interest in the uh, JBoss topic. Uh, if you are into Twitter, you could follow me on it. Also, I'm really awesome at PowerPoints. <laughs> so I, uh, I just want to quickly just uh, set a couple of expectations here. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention is that most of what I'm talking about here is not really new stuff. It's stuff that's kind of out in the wild. I tried to just uh, you know pull it together all into one place. The uh, second thing is that most of uh, again, with a couple of exceptions, the stuff that we are talking about is not like bugs that are going to get patched. These are you know fundament fundamental issues in uh, configuration or architecture. Um, oh, and one other thing, uh, they had said that this was going to be a tool release. What ended up happening in the last six months or so was like the world of JBoss security kind of exploded. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff that got released into Metasploit and I ended up uh, releasing my own scanner into the uh, Metasploit trunk. So if you want the tools, uh, you find them in Metasploit. Uh, one more awesome PowerPoint transition. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what is JBoss? How many of you are already people who use JBoss and that's why you're interested? Wow, okay, a bunch. How many of you are use WebSphere or are in the wrong room? That guy over there. Okay, so you guys, you guys already know what JBoss is, but just really quickly, uh, Java EE application server. Uh, people like it because it's open source. Uh, it's uh, by JBoss, which is uh, now a division of Red Hat. Um, and basically what, uh, what any of these uh, application servers do is uh, abstract the infrastructure so that the developers can focus on uh, you know, just writing business logic. Uh, JBoss specifically is like really big and complex. There's a lot of stuff in it. Uh, you could look at it for a long time and not see uh, everything. And I think that's where some of the issues we're going to talk about uh, come from is there aren't, aren't a lot of straightforward ways to do a lot of things. <clears throat> I just wanted to post this uh, little snippet. This is from the uh, JBoss security blog. This was uh, in response to a talk that uh, Chris from Spider Labs did at uh, Black Hat Europe. Uh, and it was a similar, similar talk. Um, and basically what the JBoss security architect said was like, well, this is, this is how it ships and the developers will know better and they'll secure it before it goes to production. And, this is like this is like late '90s style security response. Um, so, I I don't know about you guys, but this this does not thrill me. I will say though, however, that um, I got you know a nice concerned email from uh, Red Hat security response. So uh, they they kind of do a good job, I think. Uh, so there's there's some kind of disconnect happening there between the uh, the JBoss side and the the Red Hat side. And uh, go read the whole blog post, by the way. You should uh, check that out. Uh, so just to talk really quickly, uh, most of what we're talking about here is going to be focused specifically on uh, JMX, which is uh, Java Management Extensions. Um, and you know, again, it's kind of complex. I feel like Java people like to make up these big like Rube Goldberg type contraptions. Uh, are any of you guys those Java people? Um, so what you've got at, uh, at the bottom here is uh, the instrument instrumentation layer, the uh, probe layer, and uh, b basically that's where, where M beans or management beans uh, sit that allow you to manage the internals of your uh, app server. Uh, and then there's an M beans server that allows you to interface with those, and the ways that you interface with them is uh, via connectors and adapters. Uh, the difference between the two is not really important, but the point is, is that there are a lot of different ways that you can uh, connect in and uh, ultimately uh, interface with these MBNs, which as an attacker is what you want. You want to get in and remotely manage the server. So okay, so welcome to JBoss. This is the default page you get uh, with your JBoss installation. There's uh, 
some interesting things that uh, it links you to here, and we're going to talk about them. So the main way that uh, we talk about really uh, doing JMX on, J on uh, JBoss is a web application called the uh, JMX console. Just notice, by the way, that I'm looking at the slides over here when I have them on a screen in front of me. So, so, if you, so you, get a, you get a web interface to, to MBs or to, to JMX. And things to do with the JMX console, all kinds of interesting things. Uh, deploying code is always nice. Uh, shutting down the server is always fun. And this is just what it looks like. So the JMX console is installed by default with uh, zero security. You put up your JBoss ser uh, server, there's the JMX console, uh, no passwords, no, uh, no encryption, no nothing. So JBoss does give you some recommendations for securing the JMX console. Cool. Uh, some of them are wrong. Some of the things that they, some of the things they just simply don't address. So the first thing that you tend to want to do, right, is password protect your uh, JMX console. Great, there's instructions out there to do that. Uh, there's a default login module, which is what they recommend that you use. Well, the module doesn't provide you with some of the things that you uh, generally expect to see, like enforced password length complexity, uh, account lockouts after too many tries. So um, if you find a JMX console that happens to be password protected, brute force away. Um, and by the way, admin admin is the default, and you will find lots of JMX consoles out in the wild that are went to the trouble of doing the password protection, but left admin admin. So okay, I would like my uh, my AppSec folks to uh, to take a quick look at this and see if you see anything interesting. So this is the uh, this is the login config uh, that was the default until. Uh, May of this year. Um, what's interesting about this is that these, uh, th this by the way uh, came from the, uh, the Minded Security blog. I did not make this up, so thanks to those guys for finding this and, uh, and posting it. Um, so what's interesting about this is that this configuration makes uh, the uh, authentication apply only to get and post requests. Well, for those of you guys who are familiar with what uh, HTTP verb tampering is, that means that I can just use a different verb that's not get or post, and I can bypass your authentication, which is great. Uh, the fix for this, by the way, this fi the fix for this is just to remove these two lines. Just take them out. And obviously, again, for my uh, for my AppSec folks, uh, CSurf everywhere, yes. Uh, Cross-site scripting everywhere, persistent and reflected, um, definitely. One really interesting uh, use case for the cross-site request forgery here is that you'll find in some cases where people look at their JBoss server and they say, wow, this is really complicated to protect. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to use, uh, you know, Apache or my firewall or whatever, and just not allow access from outside my network to the uh, JMX console. So yeah, cool. So if you go to uh, somebody's JMX console and uh, you see like a 403 forbidden, uh, that's that's a good time to start trying to use CSERF uh, admins. And again, you know, no no protection really against against these things. Uh, this is one that I just thought was interesting. Uh, login config is the uh, config file that says uh, how your different uh, applications, including your web console and your JMX console, uh, get authenticated to. Uh, what's cool about this is that you can actually load a uh, new login config.xml from uh, an arbitrary URL, including uh, one that you control. So, um, you know, just remove authentication if you want to, or change it, add new accounts, whatever you want to do, it's fine. And uh, this this URL at the bottom is just kind of what it looks like. So, um, I mean, I think it kind of kind of an interesting uh, use case. I just think it's kind of uh, cool that you can, in some cases, uh, load from remote as part of the functionality. But honestly, if you're at this point where you can uh, run this particular functionality, uh, run something cooler like oh, one other quick thing first. So that was the JMX console. Uh, there's also a bunch of different services that allow you to, again, uh, interact with uh, the MB and stuff. Uh, 
in a variety of ways. So uh, there's a, uh, a service, uh, the RMI adapter service. So that's just a uh, network-based, it's not a web-based service. Uh, but it'll give you the same functionality as the JMX console, because again, if you remember the diagram at the beginning, the M beans at the bottom are all, uh, they're, they're, they're all there and you're just interfacing with them in different ways. So again, different authentication mechanism, different configuration. At the point at which you go and secure every way to get into uh, JMX, you've probably spent a, at least a whole day. It's, uh, you know, I want, the, I want the toggle switch that turns security on, but it's, it's not there. Uh, JBoss comes with a tool called Twiddle. It's a command line tool that uh, allows you to easily interface with, uh, with the service. So um, again, it, you will find out in the wild places that have gone through the trouble of uh, password protecting their uh, JMX console, but they don't have a firewall and they've just left this service wide open. And more, again, with different configuration, different authentication mechanisms. Uh, this stuff, by the way, I highly recommend, there are links at the end, there are references, but I uh, highly recommend that you go uh, check out the work that Red Team Pen Testing uh, has done on, on JBoss. They have some tools to interact with uh, these particularly. They have, a, they have a lot of good information. So exploits, let's get to the fun stuff. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, this stuff, uh, fortunately for all of us, but uh, unfortunately for me particularly, this stuff all ended up in Metasploit before I could get to uh, talking to you guys. Um, so this one is actually in Metasploit as of, uh, as of February. And it, it just uses the built-in code deployment mechanisms to allow you to, as an attacker, deploy arbitrary code. And again, this is, like I said, it's, it's not a bug. It's, it's part of the functionality. So uh, JBoss 4 and lower, there's a lot of cool things you can do. You can uh, load your arbitrary code from, uh, again, the site that you control. Um, there's a scripting language called uh, Bean Shell. So if the web server cannot make an outbound connection to, uh, to, your, uh, to your host, what you can do is send to write one of these uh, bean shell scripts and just have it spit out your payload to the local file system and, uh, and deploy it that way. So JBoss 5 is, uh, is a little bit interesting, um, and I spent most of my time looking at uh, 501, so uh, this may be uh, quote unquote fixed at this point, but uh, the HTTP deployer and the bean shell deployer, the code is all there, but it doesn't seem to be quite fully implemented. So uh, in theory, this is something you could go like open a, open a bug in on their JIRA and maybe it'll get uh, fixed eventually. But uh, if, you can get, if you can get a file on the local file system, uh, and again, anywhere on the file system, uh, you can deploy that. So think about things like uh, you know, anonymous FTP or you know, broken uh, image upload mechanisms, things like that. If you can get a file there, that's, that's game over uh, no matter what version of JBoss you're using. And again, check this out in Metasploit. Uh, another similar exploit, deployment file repository, allows you to upload uh, arbitrary files, so arbitrary content, arbitrary file names. Uh, I'm sure there is some purpose for this to exist. I don't know what it is. So this was actually reported in uh, 2006 and quote unquote fixed because it was actually reported as a, uh, as a directory traversal, right? So this functionality has a default directory that you, uh, you know, deploy your, your code to and you could actually, you know, traverse your way back up the tree and uh, d put files, you know, wherever you wanted. Well, so it turns out they fixed that by removing the directory traversal, but they did not remove the functionality that allows you to change the base directory. So if you set this to, uh, to just dot, like you see in the uh, example here, you are at the, uh, the server root. Um, now, not the, uh, not the actual operating system server root, but the JBoss server root. Um, which means that you know what you're probably going to do at that point is go put it, your JSP command shell into one of the uh, existing web applications that uh, lives on the on the system. Uh, but you can also do other cool things like over, overwrite config files, you know, anything like that. Um, by the way, this is uh, this is part of the uh, what we're not really talking about much: the uh, JBoss web console, not the JMX console. So if you have JMX console deployed and uh, not web console, this won't work. And it's, it's fun. And I like to think of Google, you know, crawling people's unprotected JMX consoles and finding server shutdown. So some other stuff that's, uh, 
that's not deploying code. What you'll find a lot of the time is uh, people will lock down their web console, their JMX console, their RMI, whatever, and they'll leave this, uh, this status servlet available. So, which is fine because it's just status, right? It doesn't, you can't do anything with it. Well, that depends, right? Because what, what are your developers doing? Well, one thing that they're doing is they are putting uh, secret tokens into URLs. So I just pulled a couple of examples here. You've got, uh, I don't know if you guys can read these. Uh, the first one is a, uh, a software download. So you, know, you get a link to your purchased software. It's got this uh, secret number, so you go get your purchased software. So uh, I, I recommend you guys all go get yourself some free whatever crappy app this is. Um, found this next one actually in the Google cache. The, um, it's a, uh, a blacked out large retailer that you would have heard of. Um, and uh, you know, plain text user ID and password in the, uh, in the URL. Uh, this third one is really broken. Um, if you are an admin and you are in the JBoss web console and you are viewing the status uh, page, it's going to helpfully put your uh, session ID right here as a, as a parameter. So all you really need to do as an attacker if you get the status servlet is uh, wait for an admin to go driving around in there and uh, grab this thing. Um, other interesting things, you may not need to actually own the server at all because uh, somebody else might have already helpfully uh, installed a command shell for you. You can also uh, j just append uh, the parameter full equals true to the uh, status servlet and you can get a list of the deployed applications which can sometimes be interesting. Um, you know, uh, just a couple of examples I found out there. Uh, again, this, uh, this one with the blacked out stuff, a large retailer you would have heard of. Um, this other one, uh, wow, just a lot of stuff deployed and uh, I like the idea here that uh, somebody may be relying on somebody not being able to guess the name of their, their admin functionality and uh, so I just list them. So okay, so we know we know some different stuff about about JBoss. Now we just now we just gotta go find it. Um, and luckily, there's a lot of help for you out there. Um, the customer list is a good place to start. Um, JBoss sets this X powered by header that'll come in uh, one of these formats. That thing is an absolute pain in the ass to remove. I don't know why there should be a line in the XML file that I just remove and it no longer sends this header. Look for definitely look for that. Um, this stuff, by the way, is all is all in the scanner in in Metasploit. So just fire that up and uh, hit whatever hosts, and uh, you'll you'll see all this information if it exists. Uh, error pages give uh, by default very helpful uh, error messages telling you about the version of JBoss stuff like that. Again, kind of a pain in the ass to fix. Uh, you guys familiar with this tool called uh, Shodan? You guys use this one? A couple people. Um, very cool. Um, and so you, one, one search that will bring up some, uh, some JBoss servers is X powered by JBoss. Uh, the authentication realm, if it is password protected, will always be JBoss JMX console. Nobody will ever like in reality change this. I'm almost positive of that. And uh, obviously our favorite, you can Google dork it. Um, so you know, we see we've got like 550,000 results. These are probably not all unique systems, but you know, there's plenty of them out there is the point. And this actually, uh, I should point out, means that not only did we find it, but that there's no authentication on it. By default, if I'm seeing the HTML adapter, uh, that means it's not authenticated at all, at least at the time that Google crawled it. So you guys can go have some servers there out there. Uh, I highly recommend that you check out these uh, these references. You know, this was a, a short talk, kind of an intro to what's out there. Some of this stuff goes uh, a lot more in depth. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Red Team, um, Chris, uh, however you say his name, um, from Spider Labs did a great a great talk. And then uh, again, that uh, blog post with the uh, authentication bypass that I mentioned. And I'm just under 20 minutes, so that's good. Um, so I guess we are going to do a q and if, if anyone's interested in the uh, thing across the hall. So thank you guys very much.